Hello, I am Chris Baker, and I am the Circulation Manager here at the Robinson Library, and I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite books, one of the books that uh, rekindled my love of reading, and that is Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove. Uh, Lonesome Dove is the third of a massive series of books called the Lonesome Dove Trilogy. Uh, it's about two uh, early Texas Rangers on the Texas frontier and uh, both very different personalities. Uh, one is Augustus McCray and he is a much lighthearted person, uh, very much someone who uh, enjoys a good time. And the other is Woodrow Call and Woodrow Call is the opposite of that. He is very much by the book, very stern. Um, very uh, hardworking and uh, is sort of the uh, unofficial backbone of the group. And the passage that I'm going to read for this is actually towards the end of the book. Um, it is where Woodrow and Augustus are meeting for the last time. Augustus has been wounded in a battle and he, his leg has gotten gangrenous and um, he doesn't want it cut off, so I'm going to read that um, uh, this last little this last little passage. Uh, Dern, I forgot my two favorite women too. Augustus said, "Give me some paper." The doctor brought in a tablet for Augustus to write his will on. Augustus drew himself up and slowly wrote two notes. Dangerous to write two women at the same time, he said, especially when I'm this light-headed. I might be as peculiar in my sentiments as women expect a fellow to be. But he wrote on, and then called Solly's hand drop and thought he was dead. He wasn't, but he was too weak to fold the second note. Call folded it for him. Woodrow, quite a party, Augustus said. What, Call asked? Augustus looked out the window. Look here at Montana. They've made it to Montana. That was the main point of the book. Um, that's fine and fresh, and now they've come, and it'll soon be ruined to light my legs. Then he turned his head to call. I near forgot, he said. Give my saddle to P.I. This is another character in the book. I cut up his to brace my crutches, and I wouldn't want him to think ill of me. Well, he won't, Gus, Call said. But Augustus had closed his eyes, and he saw a mist, red at first, then a silvery as the morning mist in the valley of Tennessee. Call sat by the bed, hoping he would open his eyes again. He could hear Gus breathing. The sun set. Call moved back to the chair, listening to his friend's ragged breath. He tried to remain alert, but he was tired. Some time later, the doctor came in with a lamp. Call noticed blood dripping off the sheets onto the floor. That bed is full of blood, and your friend's dead the doctor said. Call felt bad for having dozed off. He saw that one of Gus's notes to the women was still on the bed. There was blood on it, but not much. Call wiped the note carefully on his pants before going down the steps. And that passage really sums up the whole book, at least the relationship between Call and uh, uh, Woodrow, um, or excuse me, Call and Augustus. And uh, so I can't really ever say too much about it, Lonesome Dove. Uh, a, a person once told me that you can learn anything in life that you need to learn from having read Lonesome Dove, and you can learn it really well if you've read it twice. Uh, 